Uh, welcome to this pre-recorded talk titled Secure Evaluation of Quantized Neural Networks, which is a joint work between uh, me, another student from Aarhus, uh, or from Aarhus University, and Marcel Keller of uh, Data61. So we consider the, f the following setting. So we have a client with uh, an image, the small doc here, and a model owner with a neural network model M. And the client wants to know what's on their image, basically. <clears throat> so this, of course, is fairly easy if we don't care about privacy. The client just sends his, his doc picture to the model owner who evaluates his network on it and then sends back the label. So this is all well and, well and good, but clearly this doesn't work if uh, we care about privacy. This provides no privacy for the client. And if we instead send the network to the client and then he can do the inference locally, that doesn't work either, right? Because now there's no privacy for the model owner. So, but we can fix this, at least uh, theoretically, by just throwing MPC at it. So we consider this outsourced setting where still with the client and the model owner, but now instead of doing the computation between each other, they outsource their computation to a set of servers. And the way they outsource this is that they secret share their data to each of the servers, the servers run a secure computation, and then the result is given back to the client in this case. And the guarantee is that in this case, say none of the servers collude, then the privacy is preserved of the input. So of the, the picture and the model. The nice thing about this outsourced, uh, like this outsourced model is that ideally, at least we could imagine that the model owner and the client do not need to know what goes on under the hood, so to speak. They don't need to know the particularities of how these servers are actually running the secure computation. Unfortunately, in practice, uh, this is not really the case. Uh, the model owner especially needs to be very much aware of what happens um, in the secure computation because it provides or it enforces a lot of limitations on what kind of model he can actually use. Uh, so I'll go over these uh, issues uh, now because they're quite important. So first of all, of course, is that floating point numbers are not very easy to work with in MPC. In fact, they're quite hard. Um, and the way that is, this is typically solved in prior works is that they discretize the model in some way. And there is, uh, I, I want to highlight like two uh, different ways of uh, discretization here. So one is uh, bits, where instead of actually having full like 32 bit floating point uh, numbers as your weight, you actually just have a single bit. Uh, this is what happens in this XONN paper from Usenix last year or from this uh, paper by Boss et al. from 2018 from crypto that year. Um, <clears throat> of course, produces smaller models, but it's also quite uh, difficult to, to deal with. Um, another approach is, of course, to just use fixed point instead. So just instead of floating point numbers, we use fixed point numbers. And these are a lot easier to work with in, in MPC, not for free, of course, but at least they're more efficient. But the question for both of these is, of course, when should this discretization happen? Should it happen during training? Should it happen before? Well, when I say before here, I mean during training, or should it ha happen after training? So for fixed point, we can probably get away with doing this after the training has, has concluded, right? We take our floating point model and then we just treat all the floating point values as a fixed point, or we do a fixed point approximation. And this probably works. So that's well and nice. Um, but if we want to use a more aggressive form of discretization, these binarized networks where weights are bits, then for sure this has, has, has to happen during training. So if our servers use this discreti uh, like these binarized uh, protocol or the protocols that work with binarized networks, then the model owner needs to be aware of this, of course, because he cannot input a floating point model and expect it to work uh, on these uh, servers because they can't do any training. They don't know the training data that the model owner used. <clears throat> Another question here is, of course, you know, what happens to the accuracy? It might be the case that for if we choose the some bad fixed point parameters, for example, then we're going to lose a lot of accuracy in our model. So the model owner, again, he needs to be aware of uh, what would be acceptable parameters, um, fixed point parameters here. Another issue is that nonlinear functions are expensive. So a neural network is 
essentially a linear operation, then a nonlinear one, then a linear operation, then a nonlinear one, and so on and so forth. Um, so there's a lot of these in a neural network, and if these are expensive, of course, it's going to be expensive to, to do the secure prediction. One way to solve this is that we could just use gobble circuits. So this is what happens in Gazelle, which is this paper from 2018, or Delphi, which is a paper from this year, uh, both are from USENIX. But the issue is that this is, of course, expensive, and now we need to be able to switch between it. Now we need to uh, have an MPC scheme that allows you to go from, like, MPC in an arithmetic world to MPC over garbled circuits. And these are often quite expensive or they require very specialized protocols where it, it, they work well. <clears throat> Another approach is we could use MPC friendly activation functions. So this is what happens in the CryptoNet paper from 2016 or the secure ML paper. The issue is, of course, now, can we actually still train the model if we require to use some strange polynomial as all our activation functions, then is training still possible? And of course, what is the effect on accuracy? Because now we're using uh, different activation functions and it's not exactly clear if these actually work as well as the original ones, so to speak. So these issues motivate the questions that we examine. So first of all, can we use existing ML frameworks to train MPC-friendly models? So this means that the model owner does not need to dig into the nitty-gritty details of uh, the MPC. He can just use tooling that already exists, even if it's, this tooling is not designed for MPC. Second question is, um, is generic MPC frameworks capable of performing secure inference? And why is this nice? Um, this is interesting because then this then these this cluster of servers that we outsource our computation to they're no longer forced to behave in a specific way they're no longer forced to run a particular protocol in fact they can use a protocol that is for which an implementation has been tested more or uh, there is more reference material in order to implement it for example uh, and so on and so forth so, so both of these questions are sort of like complementary to each other. Um, and of course, for the second one, when we talk about performing secure inference, we of course talk about it in the context of the first question. If we can train these uh, models, can we then use generic MPC frameworks to evaluate them? Okay, and we have a number of contributions. So first of all, we observe that this idea of quantization that already exists in say TensorFlow or PyTorch actually does produce these MPC friendly models or provide or produce models that are uh, that can be evaluated efficiently in MPC. And this is interesting because it's it somehow shows that uh, some of the issues that we face when we want to do secure inference are also faced in a different context in, in this in this case, um, in efficient inference on say a mobile phone, which is what quantization is actually designed for. Second, um, we show how to evaluate these models then in a black box kind of way. And the nice thing about doing, doing it this way is that then we can take any instantiation of this black box uh, and then we get the secure inference protocol. <clears throat> For certain kinds of instantiations, we provide um, uh, optimized variants of certain sub protocols. So we have this like black box approach to the inference. And then for s some of the settings, in particular, the settings that are like the most efficient, we show how to like further increase the efficiency of these. And finally, uh, we conduct a lo lot of experiments essentially to examine the trade-offs between the different MPC instantiations and efficiency for, for these quantized networks. Um, and finally, also in context of this experimentation, we also um, benchmark our, well, the, these optimizations that we have against um, what's it called uh, CryptFlow from SMP this, this year, which is another three-party secure inference uh, protocol framework. Okay, so this quantization, so I'll go over like why it works or why it's so nice for MPC. So we consider some values, these alpha i's, beta i's, gamma i's, which are real values or floating point numbers. And the way we approximate them is as follows. So we get some integers. In practice, these would be eight bits, as well as a some, some floating point numbers, these mi's. Uh, and then 
what we do is that we take this integer and then we shift it and then we scale it in order to approximate the original value. Uh, what we need to take into or what we need to notice here is that these C's and these M's are fixed for many A's. So in practice, in particular, they will be fixed for, um, for say, for example, the entire filter of a, of a particular convolution. <clears throat> and that makes it very nice, as we'll see in a minute. So let's say the gamma is uh, the inner product of the alpha and betas. So this is essentially what we want to approximate or compute in a more efficient way. Um, by using the fact that we now approximate our alphas and betas like this, we can rewrite this uh, inner product like this, or you know, moving stuff around, we get this formula. So this is essentially the one we will be using, or be be computing securely. And this is very nice because this is a uh, inner product over integers only. So these a's and c's are integers. Then it's a scaling with some value here, and then it's some integer stuff again. Uh, it's worth noting, of course, that um, since we approximate um, some values here, we need to ensure that these values, like that any error that is in this approximation, approximation does not grow out of control, basically. So there has to be a clamping operation um, surrounding this entire thing. And the clamping is just ensuring that the value is in a particular interval. So the question remains how to handle the same because I just said that floating point operations are hard and now we still left with at least one floating point operation per um, um, per layer basically or per uh, entry in the output or per output. But we do as uh, TensorFlow does because then we uh, evaluate the models exactly as TensorFlow does it, which is what we want to do. And what TensorFlow does is that it treats us at a fixed point number. And this is great because as I mentioned before, fixed point values or fixed point uh, encodings are a lot more efficient to work with in, in MPC. And this essentially just means that we can compute this multiplication by this uh, real value M uh, by a multiplication plus some shifting, bit shifting back and forth. And finally, uh, activations, we get them essentially for free. So by picking these C's, uh, C3 uh, as zero, the M3 as this particular value, six over 255, then when we decontize the output, the Y up here, we see that it ends up in this range, like guaranteed. This is quite easy, just uh, input the values and see for yourself, I guess. And why is this nice? Well, it's nice because this corresponds exactly to applying a ReLU6 activation. And this is essentially the idea of these uh, quantized networks. So that by using this particular activation function, um, this particular encoding, then you get a model where everything is just bitwise operations or operations on integers. And uh, and yeah, you get like a very efficient inference for that, at least on embedded devices and as we shall see also in MPC. So we want to compute this securely. So I replace the M here by this M prime and two to the minus N, which is the fixed point encoding of this value. Um, and now we put like brackets around everything just to show that uh, a value in a bracket is supposed to be kept hidden. Okay, so the first part of this equation that we want to compute is of course this uh, inner product. And that's quite easy because it's in just a bunch of multiplications and additions. Uh, interestingly, in honest majority protocols, this is actually particularly cheap uh, because in those cases, the, um, the length or the number of terms in this sum uh, has no effect on the communication cost. This one is a bit more tricky. So we can, of course, multiply by this integer M prime, but this corresponds to a lift shift by a value that we do not know. And that's quite hard to do. So what we do instead is the following. So we pick a capital N here, which is an upper bound on the small N. Um, and this will just be picked like um, independent of the model. So it leaks nothing. So we can have that public. And then we multiply by this value and notice that this two to the capital N minus small N, that's going to be a positive power of two. So we can treat that as, an, as a regular multiplication. And this value can of course be comp uh, input by the model owner himself. So it does need to be computed securely, although that's also possible. Um, what we do then is that we then truncate by N and that's quite nice. So it's essentially, we shift first to the left 
and then we shift to the right. And this this trick turns um, our our uh, right shift by a secret value into a left left shift by a secret value plus a right shift by a public value. So that's quite nice. The downside is that this requires a bit of extra space uh, because we need that this initial multiplication by two to the capital n minus small n that that doesn't overflow. Uh, we have this addition that's for free, and then we have the clamping, which is just two comparisons, which is a well-known, well-studied, well like implemented all over the place primitive in MPC. <clears throat> and we need these comparisons to um, to compute this clamping, of course, because we can express clamping a value to an interval as as the small equation here. All right. So the kind of experiments we uh, perform are as follows. So. We download 16 pre-trained models from the TensorFlow repository. All these models have 28 layers and between half a million to like a bit above 4 million parameters. Um, these are the so like these are called mobile nets um, and they're designed for, well, they're called mobile because I guess they're designed for mobile phones. Um, all of these are image net networks, so they are uh, networks which takes inputs that are like a couple of hundred bits per in each each direction and then they output or then they classify this image uh, into one of a thousand categories so they're quite large and they're used in practice these uh, models and I want to stress that we take these pre-trained models and we don't do anything with them like these are just downloaded straight from the tensorflow repository um, we evaluate these models uh, across all the different interesting threshold settings, corruption settings and algebraic structures we can think of for, for MPC. So in particular, making use of the fact that we actually have this black box description of, of uh, how you do secure inference. So more precisely, this means that we test this with three parties and one corruption, two parties, one corruption, semi-honest and malicious security and secure computation modulo prime and secure computation modulo power of two. I will go over some of the results for, yeah, for, for, for these things. And I, in the paper, we also have like a bit extra. I, I will focus mostly on like running times for this inference. Um, in the paper, we also have like communication. So you can look at that. And we also have um, running times when you increase the number of parties beyond uh, three, which is uh, it's like a spoiler. It uh, like there's no point in doing that. <clears throat> Um, for, for this MPC, or to instantiate these guys, we use uh, MPSpeeds. And all the code is uh, available online in the MPSpeeds repository. So not surprising, we find that the fastest um, combination of parameters for the MPC is passive security modulo power of two um, for the three party one corruption or honest majority case. And here it's like 13 seconds for the passive evaluation. Um, down to like three seconds. If we want active security, it's uh, around a minute and a half. If we want to do computation modulo power of two, uh, or around two minutes and a half uh, modulo prime. If we do a probabilistic truncation similar to what happens in secure ML, so this is a truncation that has a slight chance of being off by one, essentially. <clears throat> and, and this would be for the fixed point uh, that we have in, in this M, then we get uh, an increase by like a factor of four for uh, the the fastest setting we have. The increase is, is not as fast in the other ones, but that's because this uh, particular setting, the passive security uh, modular power of two for an honest majority, we also have other optimizations, essentially a more efficient truncation protocol uh, in our paper. But this means like this is definitely um, viable as a practical thing, the one we have here as well. Um, so I think those these are quite nice uh, results. On the other hand, if we use dishonest majority, then it's a lot slower. So this is still seconds, but now we are in the hundreds. And this is because because pre-processing is very expensive when we have when we're working this dishonest majority. So these times are, of course, full end-to-end. -end. It's with both pre-processing and the online time. The online time is going to be faster, but um, the pre-processing is quite expensive here. Interestingly, also, is that uh, pre-processing 
is faster modulo uh, prime than it is modulo power of two. Um, so this is why we have like the reverse situation here. Here, the fastest is actually uh, passive security modulo prime. Finally, as I mentioned, we compare against Cryptflow, which is from SMP this year. And the protocol we use is uh, this column here, the uh, passive security modulo uh, power of two with an honest majority. And we benchmark essentially all the same protocols that they do in, in their paper. So it's the CFAR 10 models, the ones just called ABCD, which is like slightly small, plus a squeeze net. Um, and in this case, we perform, depending on the network, around S as, as well, up to twice as good, I guess. And for the larger networks, these image net networks, so for a squeeze net, image net network, for rest net, and for dense net, uh, we perform quite well, like two and a half seconds, 18 seconds, 19 seconds versus 10, 26, uh, 37. So I think these are all very positive results.